Tucson Church, December 12th, 1965. Brother Branham presides over his last service and also a last public appearance and his last sermon. During this farewell preaching titled Communion, Brother Branham drops some strange words. Aren't you happy that Christ has the keys to open the door called death? He will guide my passage on the river. One day I must arrive at this gate and I will be wrapped in the dresses of righteousness. He will call me from the dead. He promised it and I believe it. The congregation only understood the meaning of this sentence a week later. The meeting of communion took place here in this ancient Jewish temple. For Brother Lonnie Jenkins, this place is significant because the prophet of God chose it for his last meal. Only a few days before his departure from this dimension, Brother Branham preached his final service, communion. December 12, 1965 at the Tucson Tabernacle while yet in its first location. The building was originally the first Jewish temple in Arizona called the Stone Avenue Temple or Temple Emmanuel. It was incorporated March 20th, 1910. It currently houses the Jewish Heritage Center of the Southwest. Both Jesus and Brother Branham preached their last public sermons in Jewish temples, closing out an era. In the time of Jesus, the gospel light was to transfer to the Gentiles. Brother Random's ministry was to restore the heart of these Gentile children back to the original apostolic Pentecostal fathers. Soon, the gospel light will shift from the Gentiles and return to the Jews. This brother here also gives us his testimony concerning this last service of farewell. One of the next services that Brother Branham had here was just before Brother Branham left Tucson to go back to Jeffersonville with his family. In that particular service, there were so many people that they had a communion service. And Brother Branham had communion here a couple of days before he left on December the 18th, 1965. Uh, we know that that night, Brother Bannon left here. Uh, the accident occurred in Texas. And then on December the 24th, Brother Bannon passed away. I'm sorry. That lady so much. It was probably three years since the prophet Branham left his Jeffersonville home to settle here in Tucson under the Lord's recommendation. It's Peary Green, the head of this church where William Branham preached his last sermon. Is that I found the building without Brother Branham telling me. Now, he said that the other brothers, the reason they wouldn't start one is because they would find a building and they come and say, Brother Branham, is this where we're supposed to be? Well, he had told the pastors in this city he wouldn't start a church. That's the reason on the tapes from Shreveport, he says, I didn't start the church in Tucson. Brother Green did. But Brother Branham had to do that to keep his word to the pastors in this city. But you see, if you want to be negative about it, you can say, well, Brother Green said that, Brother Branham said that wasn't his church. He didn't start that church. It's just according to your mental attitude about it. But I took it because Brother Brown told me I followed the leadership of the Holy Ghost. And I'm going to tell you this, any time you do what the Spirit of God tells you to do, there's going to be opposition to it. December 18, 1965, Brother Branham and his family embark on a long journey to Jeffersonville, where they plan to spend their Christmas holidays. Brother Branham was driving this Ford station wagon. Inside was his wife, Meta, 
and his two children, Sarah and Joseph. While Billy Paul was driving this Chevrolet with his wife and two boys. We are exactly six in the morning. It's the start of the journey from Tucson to Jeffersonville, Indiana. It's a long journey and they will never reach the destination. First stop, Benson. Then Alamogordo. This American city is in Otero County, state of New Mexico. It is in this city that they take their breakfast, but the journey is still long. Before dark, they reached Clovis, still in the state of New Mexico. This stop is important because it will be the last before the fatal destiny. While the whole family is at the dinner table at the small restaurant in Clovis, Brother Brenham remains in the car before finally deciding to join the family at the last minute, and this time he will take just a small, very light dish, and it will be Brother Branham's last meal. Upon leaving the restaurant, Brother Branham orders his youngest son, Joseph, to ride in Billy Paul's car. William Branham and his family leave Clovis and resume their journey. It's 7 p.m. The night has just fallen on Texas. Brother Branham's convoy is about 128 kilometers from the town of Amarillo. Billy Paul's car is ahead and Brother Branham's behind, when suddenly Billy spotted a car with just one headlight on, giving the impression of a motorcycle coming against him. He barely dodges him and suddenly hears a big crash. It's the collision. The inevitable has just happened. An older model 1961 Chevrolet driven by a drunk boy of about 17 years has just hit the car of the Prophet. The accident is serious. Brother Branham finds himself between life and death, his head passing through the windshield, his left arm and elbow stuck in the door, and his leg wrapped around the axis of the steering wheel. Meta on the other side found herself under the dashboard on the right side of the car, almost dead. But Brother Branham took this hand and ran it back through the windshield and said, put her hand in mine. And he prayed something like this, Lord, help us in our hour of need. Don't let mommy die. And Sister Branham came to life. Meanwhile, Joseph, who was locked in the car, shouted loudly, and Brother Branham, in the midst of distress, lifted his head. While in heaven, a sign occurred, signaling that an important event just happened in the world. The ambulance evacuates the other casualties on the scene, but Brother Branham, on the other hand, remains embedded in his vehicle. It took 45 minutes to clear William Brannan from the scrap. Once free, he was rushed to the intensive care ward of Friona Hospital. Due to the seriousness of his condition, he was transferred to the Amarillo Hospital 15 kilometers from here. He spent nearly a week in this hospital, where the doctors did everything trying to save his life. During this dark moment, Christians gathered around the world to intercede and pray for Brother Branham, while many others made the trip. In the waiting room of the intensive care unit, brothers and sisters prayed and sang songs that the Prophet loved so much in his life. I go in the intensive care unit and they've just brought Brother Branham out of the operating room. They've got Brother Branham in traction, this arm and his leg, and they've done a tracheotomy on him. And they tell me they've not get him to respond. He had not done anything. And I walk up there and I began to talk to Brother Branham. And I said, Brother Branham, speak the word. He don't respond to anything else. Nothing. I break down and I start crying. 
and I start singing. On the wings of a snow white dove, God sends his pure, sweet love. And Brother Branham opens his eyes and smiles. The nurse gets all excited. He's awake. He's awake. He's responding. I go ahead and finish the course. And I tell Brother Branham about seeing the moon. And when I do, he tries to sit up in bed. And he shouts something. But instead of it coming out through his vocal cords, it comes out the tracheotomy. I do not know what he was trying to say. That was the last utterance that Brother Banner made, as far as I know. It's Friday evening, December 24th. The moment is sad. A radiologist doctor is looking to see Billy Paul and while he was coming with Brother Green, they saw through the window that the nurses had pulled the curtains from Brother Branham's bed. They both realized that it was over. God had just removed his prophet from the earth. The doctor told Billy Paul that his father had passed away at 1649. It was Peary Green who brought the sad news to the brothers gathered outside. The sun had just set on the western sky and an extraordinary sign was visible to the naked eye. The evening star, the moon, and the sun shone almost in the same way. The three heavenly bodies were so close to each other. He was born under a sign and he died under a sign. Billy, while broken up, remembered the words from his father saying, If you hear that I'm gone, stop for a moment and sing a verse of the song, Only Believe. Thoughts and memories passed through the minds. The prophet is gone. What remains for the world besides the judgment? If you can believe the Sodom sign of Luke, is he from? William Marion Branham's body was transported to Jeffersonville. And Wednesday, December 29, 1965, was the day of the funeral. People came from everywhere, crying for the prophet of God who had been taken back to him. That day, the evangelist Tommy Osborne paid a heartfelt tribute to William Branham at the funeral. Right after that, Gordon Lindsay brought Brother Branham to Portland, Oregon, in the big city auditorium that seats 8,000 people. We sat in the third balcony. This gentle little man came out on the platform. He was like Christ to me. He spoke very careful. I, if you know that name, uh, forget all the silly things that have happened in later years. Yes. But at the time that I knew him, he represented Christ to me. He preached tender but firm. And when he got through preaching, hundreds of people came and accepted Christ. I wanted to be able to do that. Then he called for the sick. Marvelous miracles took place as we watched. E I had my second vision. I saw Jesus in that man. Brother Branham's body rests behind this grave here at Eastern Cemetery in Jeffersonville, Indiana. Believers from all over the world come by dozens every year to visit his tomb 
where great supernatural signs continue to be seen to this day.